Hi everyone and welcome to this video on the fascinating subject of information, information entropy and symmetry. This really is a wonderful subject uh, but it can be the cause of some confusing and some confusion and so I hope this video helps uh, clear some things up. First of all we know very well that uh, symmetry breaking produces information and that symmetry can uh, hide or disguise information. And we can see this beautifully in the example of a circle. If I try to orient myself in relation to a circle, it's impossible because every point on the circle is the same. So if I want to use a circle as a clock, as a clock, um, I need to mark a uh, clock face markers on it and add some numbers. I can now tell the time, but this has come at the expense of uh, symmetry. So um, symmetry and information are always in a kind of tension. Information comes at the expense of symmetry. Symmetry comes at the expense of information. So let's look further. Before we uh, look at symmetry, let's revise what we understand by information entropy. Suppose that you're tossing a coin and I want to be certain of the outcome of your coin toss. What question could I ask? Let me ask, is it a head? You say no. And even though I got the answer wrong, I can still be certain now of the outcome. It must be a tail if it's not a head. There's the answer there. So there were two possibilities uh, in this situation, but it only required one question. And this is the definition of information entropy. And we can say that in this situation, uh, the information that I extracted um, has a value of one bit. And remember that uh, the term bit, Claude Shannon used these two words, binary digit, and put them together to get the term bit. Now, what if there were four possibilities, uh, such as the points on a compass, I want to know which direction you're heading. Um, uh, let me begin by asking, are you heading north or south? And again, you say no. Um, uh, that means that I've now narrowed it down to east or west, but I need to ask another question. So let me say, for example, is it west? Um, you say yes. Now, I'm sure that it's west, but even if you had said no, uh, I still would have known the outcome. If you'd said no, I would have known it was east. Uh, you said yes, and so I know for sure that the answer is uh, west. That took two questions, two bits of information, um, and uh, that's a, a situation in which we had four possibilities. So we increased the number of possibilities from two to four, and we required one extra question. What about this uh, pizza? Uh, eight pieces, and I want to know which piece you're going to eat. And I'll label these A to H, and then I'll just make a grid here uh, to make things a bit easier to understand. So um, as you now can see, the uh, strategy that we always use is to divide the number of possibilities in half in asking our questions. Uh, it doesn't matter which half we use, uh, but for example, to keep it simple, let's start by asking is it A, B, C, or D? Once again, you say no. Uh, I'm really not very good at this game, um, uh, but that tells me that it must be one of those. And it doesn't matter how good I am at the game because it'll always take me the same number of questions. So now let me ask, for example, is it E or F? Uh, and here you say yes, it must be one of those. Um, I still need one more question to be certain. I say, is it E? You say no. Now I know that it must be F. Here is the answer and here is your piece of pizza. Now here were eight possibilities and we needed uh, three questions, three bits of information. We can think about this in another way. Let's suppose that um, uh, instead of thinking of these as bits of information, let's suppose that each question cost us money. 
And so in the first situation, we've got two possibilities. We needed one question. Um, so this cost us $1. What about the second situation? Two questions, two bits of information cost us $2. And you guessed it in the third situation, um, eight possibilities, three questions, and this cost us $3. So in a very real way, we can think of entropy as the cost of extracting information. And also in a very real way, your telco uh, uses exactly the same sort of calculations uh, when it's um, working out how much your data is gonna cost on your mobile phone or your internet. So entropy is the cost of extracting information. Now, how does this all relate to symmetry? Perhaps you've already guessed, but let's have a look using these familiar examples. Our heart, we know, uh, has just one uh, mirror axis, no reflections, um, and it has an order of symmetry of two. So uh, you've got the heart and you're either going to flip it or leave it alone. I close my eyes and then I want to work out what you've done. How can I do that? I reckon you've flipped it. So I'm going to say, um, is this the um, mirror reflection? And you say, no. Once again, I luck out, but that doesn't matter because now I know that it must be um, the identity. You haven't actually done anything with it. Two possibilities, order of symmetry of two, and that required one question one bit of information or cost us a dollar. What about the uh, rectangle? So here um, the order of symmetry is four um, and I want to know what you've done with this rectangle. Have you left it alone or have you done something clever with it? And again I'm going to uh, divide the possibilities in half so let me begin by asking is it something in the first column? Is it your identity or have you rotated it through 180 degrees? Uh, this time you say yes, but maybe my luck is changing, um, but I still need to ask one further question. I say, okay, I think it's rotation through 180 degrees. You say uh, yes, and uh, now I know for sure that that was correct. And here is the answer here. The first question, I narrowed down the possibilities to those two. The second question, I got the correct answer. Four possibilities overall, um, uh, an order of symmetry of four, and uh, this was two bits of information, um, or two dollars worth of information. So you can see, as we increase the number of possibilities, uh, we increase the cost, we increase the difficulty of being certain of the outcome. Now, what about a square? Well, here the order of symmetry is eight. And again, I proceed by uh, just uh, dividing the possibilities in half with each question. So to start with, is it one of the first column? Is it rotation through 90, 180, 270, or the identity? Um, uh, transformation, leaving it alone. And you say, no, uh, that tells me that it must be one of these. So my next question is to ask, is it through uh, a, a reflection through the vertical or the horizontal axis? You again say, no, I know now that it must be one of these. And I need one more question. Um, is it uh, the first of these? And uh, you say, Yes, I know now that it must be this one. Um, and this has required me three questions, three bits of information, three dollars. So to summarize so far, uh, we can say that information is um, the resolution of uncertainty. And this is important as we're going to see in just a second. Information entropy is the cost of that information. The number of binary questions 
required to extract that information. So in the case of the coin toss, uh, there was one bit of information for the compass points, two bits of information for the eight pieces of pizza, uh, three bits of information. There's something um, important that we can see here, which is that um, the more uncertainty, for example, we were more uncertain about which piece of pizza you're going to eat than the outcome of the coin toss, um, the higher the entropy. So entropy and uncertainty go together. So uh, to summarize so far, we can say that uh, we can think of information entropy as uh, the cost of the information, but also as a measure of uncertainty in the situation for the system. So uh, understanding the relationship between entropy and symmetry can get very confusing, but if we keep coming back to this idea that entropy is about cost and about uncertainty, we won't go too far wrong. Until next time, bye for now.